Gorillas are the largest primates in the world today, some being as tall as 1.8 meters or 5 foot 9, weighing up to 227 kilograms or 500 pounds. They are herbivores, residing in the tropical or subtropical forests within Africa, with a lifespan between 35 and 40 years, though some can even exceed 50. They are extremely intelligent creatures, developing laughter, strong family bonds among their troops, and even building and using their own tools to try to survive. While a misconception for a while that gorillas are dangerous or aggressive, this isn't actually the case. They are naturally shy and reserved to their own habitat, only becoming aggressive when they feel intimidated or threatened. Humans have been able to monitor and observe the gorilla in the wild without any threat. Signs that a gorilla is about to become aggressive is them beating on their chest or making erratic movements or gestures. They may also unintentionally perceive a human making direct eye contact or showing their teeth as a form of threatening behaviour. Furthermore, any flash photography or the use of torches can also spark an attack. That being said, it's been advised to never approach a gorilla and to stay at a distance of 7 meters or 22.9 feet due to their brute strength possibly becoming aggressive and intentionally or accidentally causing any damage. The silverback gorilla is able to lift around 4,000 pounds or 1,810 kilograms. In fact, most dangerous situations involving the gorilla actually take place when they are removed from their natural habitat, which unfortunately is the case for today's story. On May the 27th, 1999, a male western silverback gorilla was born in Gladys Porter Zoo in Brownsville, Texas. A local counsellor, Dan Van Coppernol, actually won a sponsored naming contest that the zoo was hosting and was able to name the animal, selecting Harambe, a Swahili term for communal labour, and he was also named after the song Harambe, Working Together for Freedom, by Bob Marley's widow Rita. It was on September the 18th, 2014, when Harambe was relocated to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden so that he could learn adult gorilla behavior and join a new troop of gorillas. But sadly, two years later, he would be involved in an incident that would cause mass discussion across the globe to this day. On May the 28th, 2016, three-year-old Isaiah Dickerson was visiting the zoo with his mother when he began to tell her that he wanted to enter the gorilla enclosure, but he was told that he couldn't. I heard the exchange while I'm waiting. The little boy, I'm going to go in. No, you're not. I'm going to go in. No, you're not. The mother turns around to her other children. At this point, the boy managed to climb a three-foot-tall fence, crawl through four feet of bushes, and proceeded to fall 15 feet into a moat of shallow water, where the gorillas resided, causing panic. Children try to get into that so often. I had a standard speech that I gave to their parents when I would stop them from whatever they were doing that was dangerous. I would tell them, we're not worried about the gorilla killing your kid. That's a 13 foot fall to a cement floor. Your child is going to die when it hits the floor. But I mean, that was every day. Officials at the zoo managed to act quickly and signaled for three of the gorillas to return inside. And two of them obeyed, but Harambe, who weighed 440 pounds or 200 kilograms, didn't. He climbed down into the moat and began to approach and investigate the young boy who was splashing in the water. As this ordeal took place, a witness began recording everything on their phone. For 10 minutes, witnesses had no choice but to look on at what was happening. Unfortunately, due to the panic, many onlookers were screaming, causing Harambe to become increasingly agitated and disoriented. He began carrying the boy through the water and actually sat him up a few times, and whenever he tried to stand, he was pushed back down again. The gorilla began to walk with his arms and legs stiffly extended to appear bigger. Experts claim that this was a bluffing move to warn off any danger, but it could also be a sign of an impending attack. Regardless, he then carried the child up a ladder out of the water and onto dry land, putting the boy between his legs. Mommy's right here! Who's done? Okay, everybody back up. I'll take you. He's trying to switch. Okay, it's gonna make money. Love you. I'm right here. My son, Valerie, too. No, he's playing with it. He's playing with it. 
And it was at this point that the zookeepers made the unfortunate decision to shoot Harambe and kill him with a single rifle shot, just one day after his 17th birthday. The child was given an assessment for trauma and sent to Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, but his injuries were only considered minor. Within a few days, the video was posted to YouTube and went viral, causing a global outrage at the treatment of the animal, with most convinced that Harambe had no intention of harming the child and was actually trying to protect him. Most felt like there were other options and demanded the boy's parents or the zoo to be held responsible for the unwarranted death. However, zoo director Fane Maynard actually defended the act. The child was being dragged around. His head was banging on concrete. This was not a gentle thing. The child was at risk. Many have claimed that a tranquilizer would have been more essential to neutralize the animal for long enough to get the boy to safety. But experts have disputed this, as it can sometimes take between 5 to 10 minutes just for the tranquilizer to take effect. Upon shooting the animal, it could enter a fit of rage and harm the child, or possibly something much worse. The idea of waiting and shooting it with a hypodermic was not a good idea. That would have definitely created alarm in the male gorilla. When you dart an animal, anesthetic doesn't work in one second. It works over a period of a few minutes to 10 minutes. The risk was due to the power of that animal. The parents of the boy commended the zookeepers for their actions and thanked them for making the difficult decision. We extend our heartfelt thanks for the quick action by the Cincinnati Zoo staff. We know that this was a very difficult decision for them and that they are grieving the loss of their gorilla. The police actually investigated the parents to determine whether or not they could be charged with anything. But on June the 6th, 2016, the boy's mother was cleared of any charges of neglect as Isaiah had fallen into the enclosure while she was tending to her other children. Regardless, the zoo itself was investigated by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums regarding the standards for zoos in the country. That parent must recklessly create a substantial risk to the health or safety of the child. She was neither reckless nor negligent. It was not their fault. You know, crazy stuff happens and it happened to them, but it's not their fault. I just hope they don't feel blamed because they're not at blame or at fault at all in any way. Many celebrities spoke out against the treatment of Harambe, including the likes of Ricky Gervais, Brian May and Piers Morgan, while others defended the zoo's actions. You have a child, a young child, who is at stake, and you know, it's too bad there wasn't another way. I thought it was so beautiful to watch that, you know, powerful, almost 500 pound gorilla, the way he dealt with that little boy. But it just takes one second. It just takes one little flick of his finger, and I will tell you that they probably had no choice. It was awful for the child, the parents, Harambe, the zoo, the keepers, and the public, but when people come into contact with wild animals, life and death decisions sometimes have to be made. We will never be able to be 100% sure that people and wildlife won't be injured when they are in such close proximity, but I believe that zoos with the highest standards of care can play an important role. A gorilla is so immensely strong, but even with the best of intentions, and we are not sure that Harambe had those, the child's death was a probable outcome. However, Ian Redmond of the Ape Alliance was adamant that there were other options that weren't attempted, including showing force to try to intimidate the gorilla to back down, or even sending in a zookeeper who may have formed a relationship with the animal to guide him away from the child. Ape expert Dr. Emily Bethel, who is also a senior lecturer in primate behavior at Liverpool John Moores University, claimed that Harambe didn't show any threatening behavior towards the child. He was clearly being protective towards the boy. There were no signs of the gorilla being aggressive in the sense that he wanted to hurt the boy or anything like that. The biggest threat to the boy, I would say, is obviously when the gorilla moved and dragged him. That could have caused more harm, but the gorilla's body language is definitely protective. I would speculate that the boy is a new stimulus. He's something novel. The gorillas would never have seen a child at such close quarters. The child obviously wasn't posing any threat to the gorilla, so there's no need to attack him. And I think it's fortunate for the boy that one gorilla came over and effectively shielded him and kept the other gorillas away. I think it looks mostly like a case of extreme interest by the gorillas. Jerry Stones was a 74-year-old man from Texas who had actually raised Harambe since birth and knew him better than anyone. 
He was a gentle giant. He was a special guy in my life. Harambe was my heart. It's like losing a member of the family. I raised him from a baby. He was a sweet, cute little guy. He grew up to be a pretty, beautiful male. He was very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. His mind was going constantly. He was just a sharp character. Regardless, the outcry caused incredible stress to the family. Isaiah's mother, Michelle Gregg, begged people to not judge, but they were soon forced off of social media and to live in hiding to keep their son and his siblings safe. What started off as a wonderful day turned into a scary one. For those of you that have seen the news or been on social media, that was my son that fell in the gorilla exhibit at the zoo. God protected my child until the authorities were able to get to him. Our child has had a checkup by his doctor and is still doing well. We continue to praise God for his grace and mercy and to be thankful to the Cincinnati Zoo for their actions to protect our child. We are also very appreciative for the expressions of concern and support that have been said to us. Some have offered money to the family, which we do not want and will not accept. If anyone wishes to make a gift, we recommend a donation to the Cincinnati Zoo in Harambe's name. As a society, we are quick to judge how a parent can take their eyes off of a child. Accidents happen, but I am thankful that the right people were in the right place. On September the 24th, 2023, a documentary named after the fallen animal was released, heavily criticizing the zoo's actions and claiming that it was obvious that Harambe was actually attempting to return the boy to his parents. Though some doubt this claim, this very thing actually happened on August the 19th, 1996, in a zoo in Illinois, when a three-year-old boy fell almost 20 feet into the enclosure of six gorillas, one of which was an eight-year-old female named Binti Jar. However, upon discovering the child, she actually carefully picked him up and carried him to safety. She had her 17-month-old baby cooler on her back, leading some to speculate that her maternal instincts had kicked in. The child ended up with a broken hand and some cuts to his face, spending four days in hospital, but quickly making a recovery. However, former zookeeper Amanda O'Donoghue studied the footage closely, and she also had an opinion to share. Now gorillas are considered gentle giants, at least when compared with their more aggressive cousins the chimpanzee, but a 400 plus pound male in his prime is as strong as roughly 10 adult humans. What can you bench press? Okay, now multiply that number to 10. An adult male silverback gorilla has one job, to protect his group. He does this by bluffing or intimidating anything that he feels threatened by. I have watched this video over and over again, and with Harambe's posturing and tight lips, it's pretty much the stuff of any keeper's nightmares, and I have had many while working with them. This job is not for the complacent. Gorillas are kind, curious, and sometimes silly, but they are also very large, very strong animals. I always brought my OCD to work with me, checking and rechecking locks to make sure the animals under my care and I remain separated before entering the claim. I keep hearing that the gorilla was trying to protect the boy. I do not find this to be true. Harambe the gorilla reaches for the boy's hands and arms, but only to position the child better for his own displaying purposes. Males do very elaborate displays when highly agitated, slamming and dragging things about. Typically, they would drag large branches, barrels, and heavyweighted balls around to make as much noise as possible. Not in any effort to hurt anyone or anything, usually, but just to intimidate. It was clear to me that he was reacting to the screams coming from the gathering crowd. They didn't use tranquilizers for a few reasons. A. Harambe would have taken too long to become immobilized and could have really injured the child in the process as the drugs used may not work quickly enough, depending on the stress of the situation and the dose. B. Harambe would have drowned in the moat if immobilized in the water and possibly fallen on the boy, trapping him and drowning him as well. I can't point fingers at anyone in Harambe's death, but we really need to evaluate the safety of the animal enclosures from the visitor's side. I know one thing for sure, those keepers lost a beautiful, and I mean gorgeous, silverback and friend. I feel their loss with them this week. As educators and conservators of endangered species, all we can do is shine a light on the beauty and majesty of these animals in hopes to spark a love and need to keep them from vanishing from our planet. Child killers? They are not. It's unfortunate for the conservation of the species and the loss of revenue a beautiful zoo such as Cincy will lose. The incident led to public uproar, protests, petitions, and debates across the world. But when it comes to Harambe's actual intentions that day, and if the zookeepers genuinely had no other choice but to pull the trigger, will forever keep us all seeking answers.